big business with the Swiss, the Russian Mafia, along with the Sri Lankans and the Thais. There's also, it's also very dangerous to get involved in the business here due to the people just mentioned. But people come here, they try and look, just like a gold rush, that's what sort of time it is. Some people get rich, most people don't. Some people get lucky. selling picks and shovels that's a business to be in they certainly reckon guaranteed to make money if you're selling shovels you're not guaranteed to make money if you're looking for sapphire so lots of people die doing this job they dig deep deep holes where there's no oxygen down there and then they use plastic carrier bags with a pump and pump oxygen down to, down to the hole sometimes the carrier bags rip and that's the end of the people at the bottom of the hole. Sometimes it's even too hard to get them out, so they just leave them down there. At the night time, it's said to be pretty dangerous with desperate people hiding in the bushes with guns and knives. I don't know how true it is, but I think it's fairly true. You get all sorts of people in these sort of mining towns worldwide, and this is one of them. new motorbikes there for the lucky people who find the big stones Villa Caca in the south of Madagascar it's said that the the sapphires run all the way from here right the way down towards Tulia but this is the main place where they're found. As you drive down this road and the 20, 30 kilometers, there's little towns like this where they've mined for sapphires in the past and they're still mining now. And some of the towns have got all just derelict houses, derelict old shops and businesses where they've run out of finding the sapphires. And it's just full of potholes. A bit, bit similar to the moon, it looks a bit like the landscape there. With just holes where they've been digging, looking. 